How would you drive, boy? You almost hit that little boy. Someone's reflex subroutine needs a little tweaking. Hmm? We'll start with you, Bingo. What if Bingo had a larger role in the Banana Splits movie? So, this might sound crazy, but I've always had a lot of speculation that the Orange Gorilla was the main villain of this movie. Bingo was the only Split who appeared in the thumbnail for the trailer, he was the closest Split in the home video cover, and he was the last of the Splits to die, not counting Snorky since he was just merely a good guy. It might sound like a rather dumb idea since Flegel's the main Split and leader of the bunch. But look, while Flegel has a lot of screen time, lines of dialogue, and a couple of scary and funny moments, he isn't the last of the splits to die. He's actually the first of the splits to die. Now I know Flegel reactivates at the end of the film, thus proving he didn't die, but that pretty much means that the other splits didn't die either. This is also a reason why I had Bonnie as Flegel in my Five Nights at Freddy's movie. So it's very clear that Bingo is the primary villain of the film which is why I had Freddy in his role for my Five Nights at Freddy's movie. But there's only one problem. He doesn't appear that often in the film. He has a supporting role in the first half of the movie when the splits were just the silly smiling idiots we all know and love, then having a minor role in the second half of the movie, only doing two things like kidnapping Parker, trying to kill Austin only to get his butt kicked by Beth, leaving him to be left out throughout most of the third act, until he suddenly becomes the main villain in the end, having an epic fight with Snorky the Savior. So how can we fix Bingo's role? Well, let's begin and find out. So first off, in the beginning of the film, after Holly wakes Beth up in a snorky costume, the two see on the TV, Flegel and Bingo doing the riddle time sketch from the original show. So Bingo, what orange has a goofy smile and doesn't listen all the time? A disrespectful banana? Nope, it's you Bingo! Flegel and the audience laugh as usual, but Bingo looks rather annoyed and disappointed. Later, when Beth is talking to Mitch the next morning about Harley still watching the show, Harley is watching a sketch from the show. It is the club meeting segment from the original show, showing Flegel bashing his desk with his gavel, startling Drooper and Snorky, who both jump, trip, and fall down a lot by every bang. However, Bingo isn't. He has his hands on his ears, trying not to hear the dreaded noise. Flegel finishes when he bashes his hand with the gavel. The meeting of the Banana Splits Club will now come to order. Now, rise up, Splits! Drooper, Snorky, and Bingo get up in a cartoony and military-like manner. Flegel then pulls out a couple of banana-shaped medals out of his desk. Today is the day where I'll give you bananas the bananas of honor. Flegel gives the first medal to Drooper and the second to Snorky. Unfortunately, Flegel doesn't have one for Bingo, who is confused by the fact that he didn't get one. Wait! Ain't there one for me? Sorry, Bingo, but you don't behave like good old Drooper and Snorky. You disrespect the rules of the Banana Split Club, so you don't get one. The audience laugh, but Bingo looks extremely disappointed. Flegel then walks away to grab his gavel and comes back to Bingo. But don't worry, Bingo old pal. I've got something you can have. Oh yeah? What's that, Flegel? Flegel then bangs Bingo in the head with his gavel. The audience, including Harley, start to laugh. A double ooch, that's what! Flegel and Drooper laugh their butts off as Bingo starts rolling around the floor in a cartoony manner. Snorky, however, feels bad for the gorilla and helps Bingo get up. When Bingo gets back on his feet, he brushes Snorky who is patting him on the back. Thanks a lot, runt! Harley stops laughing, looking confused by Bingo suddenly insulting his favorite split of the bunch. The rest of the film goes on how it normally goes. Harley blows out the candle, receives the wand from Austin, Beth and Mitch telling him they're going to Taft Studios for the live taping of the banana splits, and Zoe reluctantly invited to it. During the scene with the security guard, Sal, when Harley asks him if he likes his job at the studio that made his favorite show, Sal tells him a foreshadowing about Bingo's role. Well, kid, I find it interesting working at this old studio, but you know, 
Sometimes at night, when I am the only one here, I see the splits wandering around the place and riding their little buggies, laughing and singing. But one split didn't look like he was having fun. Really? Who's that? The gorilla Bingo. While the others have a lot of fun, that orange furball looks rather annoyed. I sometimes wonder if he doesn't like being the show since he was built. Built? Well, you see, kid, the staff used to have actors in costumes back in the 60s, but the actors were constantly getting injured on set, so the staff decided to use animatronics to save costs. Later, during the scene where the splits almost run over Harley, Bingo was the one driving the banana buggy, not Flegel. When Beth pulls Harley away from the road, Harley looks back at Snorky normally, but Snorky actually turns his head to look at Harley and is about to wave at him, but Bingo holds his shoulder. And when Snorky turns to him, Bingo shakes his head no, and the splits drive off. Harley looks confused, and Beth gets his attention. What the hell were you thinking? I'm sorry, Mom. I just wanted to meet the splits, especially Snorky. Look, Harley, you have to be more careful than that. Harley has an understanding look, then turns and has a talk with Zoe. Did you see that, Zoe? Snorky tried to wave at me, but Bingo stopped him. Don't you find that a bit strange? Nope, not really. Um, the splits were probably just in a hurry for the recording, Harley. Harley is rather confused by Bingo stopping Snorky waving to him, then thinking back to the segment he saw of Bingo insulting Snorky, and other times where Bingo acted like a hothead. He starts to wonder if Sal saying Bingo isn't having fun with his job is actually true. Later in the backstage scene, the Splits come inside and meet Carl, who greets them normally, but instead of scolding all of them for almost killing Harley, he only blames Bingo since he was the one driving the car. Oh, Bingo, you naughty ape. You almost hit that little boy. Looks like your reflex subroutine needs some tweaking for once. Bingo gives out a sigh and reluctantly walks into the update booth as Carl talks to the others. Now the rest of you boys, get backstage. As you know, the show must go on. Flegel, Snorky, and Trooper walk away as Carl begins Bingo's updating. Let's get you updated now, my friend. You've had too many hiccups, so let's not have any today, okay? Carl plugs Bingo into the updater and leaves just like in the original film. The rest of the film goes normally, only difference being Bingo not arriving on set until the Wheel of Endings is introduced. After Stevie tells the splits about the show's cancellation, Bingo's dead-looking eye sockets turn burning red, and he goes into Stevie's dressing room, replacing Juber who does it in the original film. Stevie's lines are the same, and Bingo gives the lollipop death in the exact same way. Bingo then comes out of the dressing room. Flegel, Juber, and Snorky are despondent over their show's cancellation. What are we gonna do now that the show is cancelled? Well, fellas, I heard they're gonna tear us apart and sell us to the theme park division. So, I don't think we would let that happen. The other splits become interested in what Bingo said. And the story goes on normally as Flegel and Juper go on doing their kills. Later, after Snorky ran over Mitch, this time actually killing him, he gets out of the buggy he drove and goes off to get back into the studio. But while he's doing that, he hears Sinister laughing from an alley and goes to check it out. He peeks behind a wall to see Bingo jabbing his drumsticks into Doug the other page's eyes like how we see in the climax. Bingo then throws his body into a hatch leading to where that large pile of bodies were, laughing again. <laughs> My plan is going very well so far. Bingo then leaves to continue the gore of the film. Snorky looks rather confused at what Bingo said, wondering if he, Flegel, and Drooper were tricked into doing this murderous rampage. Eventually, he will realize it when Harley asks him to help him, Zoe, and Parker escape. It goes normally, but Snorky actually cries before holding Harley's hand.
The rest of the film goes on normally, and yes, Bingo still gets knocked out when Beth throws him off the bridge, and he stays like that until the scene where Beth, Austin, Paige, and Poppy interrogate Carl and go into the hatch to defeat Flegel and Drooper. Instead of stopping to see the unfinished hoodie costume, Poppy instead hears circuit sounds. She turns to see Bingo's corpse twitching. After a few moments of intense silence, Bingo's eye sockets turn burning red, and he gets up, revealing he was faking his death this entire time. Nap time's over! Poppy becomes scared, screaming a couple of times. Bingo then grabs an axe that was on a table and kills Poppy with it. Bingo then turns to Carl and slowly walks to the cell he's in. The insane gorilla breaks the lock and enters the cell as Carl fearfully tries to back away. Batter up! Bingo then slams the axe into Carl's head, killing him. The rest goes on as usual with the Williams family fighting Flegel and Drooper, though there's a couple of differences. When Austin gets Flegel's attention, Flegel lets go of Beth, who then kicks the dog's legs to make him trip, and just as Austin's about to stab Flegel with the crowbar, Drooper grabs him and grows sharp, rotten teeth as he roars viciously at Austin. Beth, however, grabs Austin's dropped crowbar and stabs Drooper in the mouth with it just as he's about to eat Austin's head. Flegel then gets up, scratches Beth's back, and punches Austin. Flegel then starts to choke Beth. I done all of this so we can see more of Flegel's Terminator face. Harley comes and instead of throwing Beth his wand, he instead runs to Flegel, gets his attention, and stabs him in the gut with his wand. Flegel starts to twitch and spark with circuits, and then drops dead. Harley then rips the wand out of his chest, smoke comes out of the large hole in it, and the Williams family go off to meet up with the others like in the original film. Of course, Bingo shows up suddenly, but instead of repeating the times almost up line, he instead reveals the entire reason why the banana splits became Terminators. So, you have forgotten about me, haven't ya? Leave me to rot, huh? Well, that's exactly what goes on in my life. No one talks about me, treat me nicely, or even care about me. All this I had to go through with the annoyances of that bossy dog, that stupid lion, and that annoying elephant. So I had enough of this nonsense. No more willy-nilly silliness. Thanks to an update I got and the show's cancellation, I can now finally get my time to shine. Tricking my friends into helping me with this tra-la-la horror scheme I wanted to achieve for a long time. Oh my, you're a monster, Bingo! You're darn right, you little brat! Because you jerks are starting to foil my plans, especially killing those two idiots who didn't respect me for years, I think it's time for me to finally end this nonsense. I'm not gonna give you any last words. I'm gonna finish you off once and for all. Snorky then appears and has an epic fight with Bingo. It goes normally, but there's a couple of differences. The fight goes a little longer, and the two make the noises the animals they're based on make. And here's the last difference. When Bingo rips Norky's heart, instead of simply laughing, he says in a sinister, evil way, Elephants never forget, and you won't forget this, you selfish pachyderm. Snorky then grabs Bingo, and instead of cracking his head open under unknown circumstances, he twists his neck. Sparks start sprouting out of Bingo's head as his mouth starts to puke a lot of oil, and the two collapse. Harley runs to Snorky and mourns over his death, but he has a little more to say to make it more emotional. Snorky, you saved us. You will always be my favorite, Snorky. Snorky then takes a hold of Harley's shoulder and, in a surprising and sad twist, speaks for the first time in 51 years. I will always remember you, good friend. Snorky then drops and dies. As Harley and Beth look over his body, with Austin joining, Paige and Zoe walk towards Bingo's body, who is twitching and garbling. After a few seconds, Bingo stops and finally dies.
ending the menace of the evil gorilla. The ending is also the same. The cops and ambulance arrive, Zoe starts to like Harley, and Austin and Paige show their feelings towards each other. But Beth doesn't punch Mitch since he was already dead. Harley does ask Beth where he is, though, but Beth simply says he might already be dead. As the Williams family get into their car, intense music starts playing as a truck passes by carrying the dead corpses of the banana splits. Harley looks out the window and waves goodbye to the splits as the Williams family drive away. The tra la, -la song starts playing as we're shown a close-up of Bingo's ugly mug, and the movie ends with his eye sockets glowing burning red as he laughs maniacally one last time. <laughs> And that's what if Bingo had a larger role in the Banana Splits movie. Some of you may not agree with me, but hey, people have different opinions. But I just wanted to discuss this to you guys, cause I've always had a feeling Bingo was the main villain of the movie. And I just wanted to fix his role, along with other things in the movie that didn't work, making it a slightly better movie. I would say though that maybe someone could have done it better than me, but for now, this is the best example of Bingo having a larger role. Also, thanks to everyone for the 10,000 subscribers. I honestly never thought I'd get this far. When I started making videos, I honestly was worried about how my channel would turn out since there wasn't a lot of likes and comments, and I was even planning to quit YouTube. But since mid-2018, I got more likes and comments, and I became what I believe the best indie YouTuber of all time. So, thanks to everyone for supporting me for the past 4 years. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like it, comment about it, click the notification bell so you won't miss a video, and more importantly, subscribe to my channel. This is Dan Schneider signing out. Sha -la -la, sha -la -la -la. We've killed so many people.